What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, and it feels amazing to be back here talking to you guys again. And I thought what better topic to kick off this week's discussion than benzodiazepines. So I wanted to kind of present this to you guys in a, in a way that it comes up a lot clinically, right? Have you guys ever wondered why Xanax, also known as Alprazolam, feels like it hits really fast and really hard, but it doesn't last long, right? Patients often come back and say, I have to take more. And I'm sure if you are a clinician or provider that you've been giving, you've had patients come to you and say, hey, like this Xanax wears off quickly. And you probably have even had a few people who have abused Xanax. So what we can think about here is the secret is in how benzodiazepines are absorbed and metabolized, right? And not only how they're absorbed and metabolized, but also how they're distributed in the body. So let's break it down here today. So benzodiazepines are rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. And depending on their chemical properties, they can quickly penetrate the central nervous system. So they rapidly can cross the blood-brain barrier. And the key player when we're talking about all this is something called lipophilicity, right? And we're going to explain what that means. So the more lipophilic benzos, like diazepam or alprazolam, they cross the blood-brain barrier very fast, and they produce a near-instant calming effect. And that's why Xanax works so quickly in reducing anxiety, right? Because the Xanax is going to cross the blood-brain barrier very rapidly, it's going to get into the CNS. But, and there's always a but in psychiatry, there's a catch. These fast-acting benzos don't stick around in the brain for very long. What ends up happening is they get rapidly redistributed into the peripheral tissue, especially the fat cells. That's why we're talking about lipophilicity. This means that the anxiolytic effect is going to fade very quickly, leaving users chasing that initial relief. And this is exactly why some patients keep reaching for more Xanax. It's not just about metabolism, it's also about redistribution. Now let's compare two benzodiazepines. We'll take diazepam on one hand and we'll take lorazepam on the other hand. Now diazepam has a longer half-life than lorazepam. And you would think to yourself, well, it should last longer, right? But guess what? Its clinical effect is actually shorter, and here's why. Because it's more lipophilic, and rapidly moves out of the brain into fat tissue, it's going to be redistributed quickly. So it's going to get into the brain, cross the blood-brain barrier very rapidly, but then it's going to be redistributed back to fat tissue relatively rapidly as well. So it's going to have a quick on and quick off. Now if we take lorazepam on the other hand, it's less lipophilic, so it stays in the central nervous system longer. It's not going to be redistributed. It's not going to as rapidly enter the CNS, and it's not going to be as rapidly redistributed, right? So it's going to last longer, providing more sustained effects, and it's all going to do all this despite having a shorter half-life, which kind of intuitively doesn't make sense, right? So next time, if you find yourself wondering why some benzodiazepines hit fast and fade quickly, while others provide steady relief, you should remember this topic of lipophilic benzos. So things like alprazolam or diazepam, they work fast, but they don't last. The less lipophilic benzos, such as lorazepam, have a slower onset, but provide more sustained relief, right? And on top of that, we have to consider redistribution, not just metabolism. So redistribution also determines how long a benzo actually feels effective for. If you found this breakdown helpful, then I'd love for you guys to go ahead and hit that like button and of course subscribe to the channel for more psychopharmacology deep dives and drop a comment below if you want to see more benzo related topics this week.